Thank you for watching videos by Jeff Sibelius. In this episode, I'll discuss the batteries for unique drones, how to make them last as long as possible, and more importantly, what to do and not to do to handle them safely. This episode is part of a series of videos designed to help you fly your unique drone. This episode applies to the unique Q500 Plus, Q500 4K, and the Typhoon H Hexacopter. Let's get started with batteries for unique drones. As a pilot of unique drones, you need to understand the dangers inherent to lithium polymer, or LiPo, batteries and how you can reduce your risk. So the first question is, are unique batteries safe? Well, safe is a relative term. Are motorcycles safe? Power tools? Handguns? The answer for all of these items is yes, they're safe as long as they're handled and used properly. When abused, they all can be very destructive, LiPo batteries included. Unique batteries are very well made. I've read thousands of posts by fellow unique owners, and I have yet to read one about a unique battery catching on fire. That doesn't mean that these batteries don't require caution while using them. If a LiPo battery is punctured, gets damaged, or shorts out, it can explode or start a severe fire that burns at several hundred degrees Fahrenheit. The key is to avoid these fires by handling, charging, and using the batteries properly. So let's talk about the batteries themselves. You may have heard the term smart battery. Are unique batteries smart? The term smart battery refers to technology built into the battery that allows it to track its own usage, show its level of charge, discharge itself if left fully charged for too long, and report on its health. Unique batteries do not have these features. There are two ways to determine how much of a charge is on a unique battery. You can use a battery tester, this one works for the Typhoon H and the Q500 batteries. If you don't have a tester, your only choice is to put it into an aircraft, boot it and the transmitter up and look on screen. Unique batteries do not track their usage, nor do they provide ongoing metrics for their health. When a unique battery runs low during flight, it won't return home. It will simply land wherever it happens to be at the time. You have to manage these aspects of a unique battery yourself. There are ways to accomplish this, and I'll cover them later in this video. Alright, so you understand that you're responsible for managing your batteries. What things should you avoid to keep the batteries safe? First, do not expose your batteries to water. Keep them out of the rain and don't fly when it's rainy or foggy. Never puncture a battery. The air getting inside the battery can cause a fire or even an explosion. Avoid heat and direct sunlight. Don't leave your batteries in your car unless your car is running with the air conditioning on, or if the outside temperatures are cool. Don't leave the batteries in direct sunlight as this can raise their temperature even on a mild day. Don't let anything metal touch the battery contacts. For example, don't stick a battery in your pocket that has coins or ballpoint pins in it. This can cause a short and start a fire. Never use a battery that shows signs of damage. Get rid of it immediately. Don't leave your batteries unattended while charging. If your batteries are charging, stay close and check them regularly to make sure they haven't started a fire. Don't leave the batteries on the charger after they're charged. Once they're charged, unplug them. Don't leave them to charge overnight. Once a battery shows signs of failure, do not charge it again and do not use it. So what are those signs of failure? With a dumb battery, you have three indicators. First, do you see any sign of external damage to the battery? Second, do you notice that your battery doesn't give you the same length of flight that it used to? Finally, do you see that the battery is swelling or bulging? This is often called a puffy battery. Look at this battery. You can see that it's swollen and soft when it should be flat and solid. 
this battery should not be used. Now I keep telling you to get rid of defective batteries. So how are you supposed to do that? You can't just throw these into your garbage. So what do you do? Fortunately, Home Depot and Lowe's have made this easy. Many of these stores will take your LiPo batteries and dispose of them for you. All you have to do is seal your old battery in a plastic bag. Then, take it to a store that accepts recycles and drop it off at their recycle center. Just look for the recycle center near the front entrance of either store. So are you terrified of your batteries yet? Don't be. I don't want you to be scared, you just need to be informed and aware. So what do you do to stay safe and get the most from your batteries? Like I said before, you must monitor your batteries because they can't do this for themselves. Start by numbering your batteries so you can track how they're working. I have 9 batteries for the Typhoon H and about that many for the Q500. There is no way I could monitor each battery's performance without having them numbered. A black permanent marker works great for Q500 batteries. For Typhoon H batteries, you can pick up a silver permanent marker from Amazon. The link is in the description below. Always inspect your batteries before each flight looking for damage or puffiness. That should be part of every pre-flight checklist. Try to fly your battery to a low voltage warning to run it low and track how long it lasts. This is actually very easy. When you're set to take off, begin recording video. When you land, stop the video. Now you have a record showing how long the battery flew right down to the second. Now track how long each battery lasts for each flight. This is also easy to do. Sign up for a free account with kittyhawk.io and you can use it to track all the information you want. If you only use it to track battery performance, it's well worth the effort. If you plan to get a commercial license, you must track flights, inspections, maintenance actions, and battery cycles as part of your pilot requirements, and kittyhawk.io does a terrific job with this. With this tracking, over time, you can see when a battery is losing its ability to hold a charge. When a battery that lasted 16 minutes now only lasts 11 minutes, or 10 minutes, you know it's time to replace that battery. If you use a battery for several short flights, take it out and fly it all the way to low voltage warnings. Run them low and recharge fully to keep them performing well. Here's a tip to help you spread out your battery usage evenly. Keep track of how many times you charge each battery by marking it on the side. Then it's easy to use each battery equally, rather than just flying one battery all the time. Here's something you might not know. Charge your batteries right before takeoff. Don't charge everything up and let them sit for two weeks before using them. Charge them the day of your flight or the day before. This will help your batteries hold their charge better. There are a couple of neat accessories you can pick up to make it easier to transport your batteries safely. First, if you own a Typhoon H, go to the link in the comments below and purchase battery caps. You can get them in green and red. They cover the battery terminals very snugly, protecting them from contacting anything metal. The only downside to these covers is that you can't put them on batteries that go into the battery slots of your unique case. That said, they're still a great deal. I don't know of any similar product for the Q500. If you find one, please put it in the comments below. Next, buy some LiPo battery bags. These bags do a few things. They keep the batteries separated and out of direct sunlight. They protect the batteries from water spills. Most important, if your battery malfunctions and begins a fire, a LiPo bag can retard or even stop the spread of the fire. These things are very cheap, so there's no excuse not to get one. Most RC guys like to put the batteries into a LiPo bag while charging them. Unfortunately, the Unique chargers are not built to let you do that. If you use a third-party charging device, it's smart to use LiPo bags while charging. Look at this video that shows how a LiPo bag can slow and stop the spread of a burning battery.
Now that you understand unique batteries, you can keep them working as long as possible while flying, charging, and storing them safely. I hope you enjoyed this unique video. Links to more unique training videos are on screen, so be sure to check them out. Please like and subscribe so I can continue to release these videos, and post your requests for things you want covered in the comments below. Thanks for watching.